Now for more on the future of the business of space, let's talk to a man who's been up there. From Houston, we're joined by Leroy Chow, a former NASA astronaut and International Space Station commander. Welcome to the show. Oh, great to be with you. Thank you. Now, the space race really used to be the purview of governments, but now, at least in the U.S., it's being run more by private companies and entrepreneurs. Who are some of the up-and-coming players in this field? Well, sure. Actually, as you said, uh, space has long been the purview of governments, especially exploration, but that is slowly changing, and it's been speeding up because of companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin here in the United States. Uh, we've got some visionary entrepreneurs who are very interested in exploration themselves. So it's not just about making a profit, but these individuals want to build infrastructure. And uh, in the case of SpaceX, Elon Musk even wants to go colonize Mars. So they're looking pretty far into the future and with big vision, and it's pretty exciting. So how is having more private sector involvement changing the pace of these developments in the space industry? Well, you know, space investment, and one thing you've got to make sure of is the, the tail's never going to wag the dog. And so it has to make sense from a business standpoint. It has to have acceptable risk and acceptable returns that uh, investors expect. And so you have some ventures that meet those criteria. And so you're, it's pretty exciting to see some startups get going and actually start to make a go of it in the space sector. It's very exciting because they complement the efforts of a SpaceX or a Blue Origin who are, you know, funded by their initial founders, but also uh, now also bring in the case of SpaceX, a uh, very public investment from mainstream investment sources. So it's, it's an exciting time. Now, the recent forum on space technology and investment focused, we did see that focus on investment. What are some of the unique risks of investing in space technology and space related companies? Well, if you look at the classic model of space and space development, it takes a big, huge capital investment, especially if you're developing hardware like rockets or satellites. Those are very expensive items. And so that would take a very big upfront investment and carry with it a lot of risk. That plus it takes a lot of time traditionally to develop these things. And so you're looking at many years before you're going to get a significant return. That's not an attractive picture to the traditional investment or startup funder. And so that's got to change. You've got to change the paradigm. And some companies have been able to do that. And so it's exciting to think differently, if you will. And there are a handful of companies that are trying to make a go of it, both here in the United States as well as internationally. Now, the caveat is, along with that, and the U.S. saw this you know, in the, in the last 10 years, there have been a lot of companies set up that are basically not that credible, but they sound good at the time. And it's, you know, so it's a, it's a matter of getting that wheat through the chaff and making the right call as an investor. And that can certainly be a very expensive call. Um, let's look at China now. How much are entrepreneurs and private investors involved in the space program there? Or is it still mostly a government-run program? Well, it's still mostly a government-run program. I know there are a few companies there trying to make a go of it, and that's very exciting. Same with other countries, in Europe, certainly, and in, in Russia, even. There are some companies that are starting up and trying to make their own satellites or Earth observation systems, things like that. And so I think that's a good sign. Now, it's a matter of regulation as well. It's probably easier here in, in the U.S. and in, in Europe to, uh, to be able to do those things. Uh, but I see China and Russia also committed to this effort, so I'm hoping that we'll see regulation open up there and allow these kinds of things to flourish, and uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Now, looking around at the different aspects of space technology, which ones tend to get the bulk of investment? Well, traditionally, satellites. You know, satellites are a proven entity. You know, a lot of entities, all countries use satellites. And so that's one place that's really big, not only communication satellites, but Earth observation satellites. You know, people finding more and more uses for Earth observation. Uh, and so those are kind of traditionally the places. Now you see a lot of startups interested in uh, small satellite launchers, trying to make inexpensive launches to launch these very small satellites. Uh, don't need the big rockets that, uh, that traditionally we use. Right. So those are two of the areas that, that are, are kind of, you know, uh, traditionally uh, and, and startup-wise uh, burgeoning. And just quickly, Leroy, space does seem to be getting a bit more crowded as these companies race to develop commercial space travel. So from an astronaut's perspective, what's your take on that? 
Well, yes, of course, uh, you know, the satellite industry is, is very tightly controlled. You can't have satellites interfering with each other, especially communication satellites. So by, by international treaty, we have slots. We have a, a process by which you can launch your satellite into these slots. And so the regulation has to follow pace with this development so that we don't have chaos up in space because we don't want satellites and other vehicles running into each other. Indeed. Thank you so much.